Welcome to my vlog. Oh yeah! Welcome to Shadow Bomb's vlog. So party up in here. Party all day, party all night. Come on, join the fun. Subscribe. Show them what I'm talking about. Yeah! Hello everyone and welcome. Yes, I know it's been a long, long time since my last vlog. I've been incredibly busy with my vampire killing kits. Ooh, ooh, shameless plug. Um, business has been incredibly good, which is a good thing, but it's kept me from doing vlogs. Uh, so here I am doing another vlog, and today I'm going to teach you how to make something. I'm going to teach you how to make a Chinese broadsword, but out of wood. Uh, I'm going to make mine out of red oak. You can make yours out of whatever type of wood you like. Um, I'm going to make it out of red oak because I really like working with it. It's easy to find. You can get it at pretty much any Home Depot. And when it stains up, it looks really nice. Some of you may remember when I made the crossbow out of red oak. Uh, another project I did a while back. If you want to see how I did that, check back through my vlogs and you'll see uh, I did one on making this. Warning, warning. Shameless self-promotion in three, two, one. One quick note, um, I'm going to be building more of these and selling them on my website at uh, mysteriouspass.com uh, as they're made out of wood for vampire hunting. Uh, you know, as I sell vampire killing kits. I'm also going to make an entire series of modified martial art weapons made out of wood for the purpose of vampire hunting, obviously. That will also be available on my website. So if you want to check those out, please do. I'll be putting them up as I create them and build them. And if you want me to vlog uh, tutorials on making them as I make them, let me know and I will uh, do that as well. Okay, back to the vlog. Now I know what you're saying. Walter, why are you doing a vlog on making a Chinese broadsword or a pair of Chinese broadswords when this is sort of a horror slash Halloween uh, yard haunt vlog? Well, two reasons. Number one, I'm not only a haunter, but I'm also a martial artist, and I like to practice. And the Chinese broadswords can be a little long and wieldy if the weather's bad and I need to practice inside. Or I just don't want my neighbors to call the police on me. So I wanted to custom make one that's a little bit shorter that I can train with inside, as opposed to always having to go outside. The other reason, no, the reason why I'm doing it on this vlog is because you can use the same technique that I'm using to make realistic, cool-looking uh, weapons for your haunt. For example, Chinese broadsword always looks good. You can use the same technique to make axes, knives, whatever. Plus, it's just a lot of fun. So now, remember in doing this, use your imagination. Remember, you, can, you don't have to follow me exactly. You can do whatever you want and make whatever type of custom weapon you want. If you can think about it, and you can imagine it, and you can sort of sketch it out on a piece of wood, you can make it into reality, which can be kind of cool for a haunt. You can do some really, really awesome stuff. So anyway, enough of me yakking, let's get started. Oh, wait, one thing. Before we get started, let me show you sort of a fast forward. I'll show you what the finished product looks like, you know, how they came out. So you can look at it and decide, oh, this is cool, I want to do this. Or, no, I don't like them, don't want to do it. You know, because I hate when I see a vlog Somebody says, oh, we're going to build this, and then they don't show you until the end. And you go through the whole thing, and then at the end they show it to you, and you're like, what? I don't want to build that. What the heck? So, here we go. Quick peek. There you go. Look at it. And if you don't want to watch the vlog, still subscribe. What the hell? Ah, watch it anyway. It's good for you. What else are you going to do with the time? All right, so there they are. Aren't they pretty? All right, now back to the rest of the vlog. Okay, I started off by getting a one inch by six inch piece of red oak. That's right here, because uh, I thought the thickness would be good for it. And six inches should give me plenty for my weapon. Now what I did is I decided to use this as a basis because I like the curvature of the handle and I wanted to get that right. Now if you're doing another weapon, whatever you put down, you can trace if you're tracing one, or if you're designing your own, you can just design your own. Now the wood's a little short here, but that's fine because I'm actually going to shorten it because the whole idea of this is so I have a training weapon that's a little smaller, easier to use inside. Uh, I'll have to trim it down and all to get the balance right, but you probably won't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to trace around and then do my modifications so I get the basic shape of the blade right, and then I'm going to do my modifications. And I'll have one going this way and then one going this way so that I have the two swords. 
That's a theory anyway. Okay, I did the rough cut of the swords. Um, here's the one, as you can see. Just a rough cut there, and here's the spare wood. Now I'll probably use this for the hand guards. Uh, I want circular hand guards. I do have a little bit left over here I might use to make the hand guards as well. So I did the cut. So I've got the basic shade of the blade down. Now I need to shape it and sand it. Now to shape it, I'm going to use this wood shaper a little bit. Uh, and then, because I'm lazy, I'm going to go right to the belt sander. Uh, now you can use a belt sander if you have it. If you don't have it, then um, a regular hand sander will do. It'll just take a little longer. Uh, to uh, cut it, I used my Blade Runner, which I've mentioned before and I love. Now uh, you can use any type of jigsaw uh, to do your cutting. Again, if you have a hand tool, it's going to take you a little, a, well, a lot longer. So, um, well, let's see how it goes. Okay, there's the Blade Runner, and that's what I used to cut the sword. Now, a lot of the work that I'm going to do, I'm going to do on my belt sander. Uh, it's just going to be easy, and I, I'm lazy. I'm going to use the shaper a bit, but, you know, to take the rough edges off. But I'm going to do most of my shaping with the belt sander because, you know, as I've said many times before, I'm lazy. Notice the whole time I'm going with the grain. So there we go, the two of them getting there slowly but surely. Um, now you'll notice I'm skipping the handle because I did decide I do want them wider. So I'm going to take two uh, quarter inch uh, red oak and put them put one on either side and round it so that it gives me a nice beefier handle to hold on because once I round this it would wind up being really really thin so I'm gonna put uh, do a little bit more with that still need to sand this down quite a bit it's nowhere near done but you can see the shape starting to uh, starting to come into play there and how it is starting to look like a uh, somewhat like a Chinese broadsword Okay, I made a decision in thinking about the handle. Um, I have some red oak, and I was going to put red oak on either side uh, so that it matches, and then sand it down so it's seamless, like it's one piece. And I, I, I thought better of it. I thought, you know what might be nice is if I use like a blonde wood or a lighter color wood on the outside. Um, so I looked around to see what I have, and I didn't have the type of wood I wanted. So what I decided to do is I've got a ton of basswood, so I'm going to use that because that's a little that'll sand, uh, stain a little a little different, and still give me the look I want. Where I've got two sides that are a little different than the center. Um, I can get away with using basswood because it's the handle. We've got the blade that runs all the way through the handle, and then these will just be the sides of the handle that I'll make out of the basswood. So we've got going on what, what we call a full tang here, which is the blade running all the way through the handle. So I can use a softer wood on either side. This is still a hard wood in the center, so that'll be all right. And that should give me the look I'm looking for. Um, I would run out and get a different style of wood, but um, as you know, I'm incredibly lazy. So don't feel like doing it. Okay, <clears throat> I cut the two sides of the handles, and I'll show you those. Uh, let's take a look here. So here they are, and they're just going to go get glued right on here like that, and then the other one on the other side, <clears throat> so that we'll have something like that. Now, if you notice, I cut this on an angle here, and that's the only cut that I was really concerned about. Everything else doesn't need to be lined up perfectly because I'm going to sand it and round it. So this is all going to be rounded. So if it doesn't line up perfectly with the inside, it doesn't matter because I'm going to take care of that in the sanding and the shaping. But this I did, I was worried about. I did want that to be nice and straight. And the reason for that is if you notice when I cut this, the blade itself, I made this section at a square and straight. It's sort of, it's not really, it's turned but it's square to itself and the reason for that is that's the way that the the hand guard is going to go on it's going to go on in an angle like that because it's it's straight to the blade but curved to the handle because the handle is curved a bit let me show you on my broadsword here 
see how the cur handle curves downward a bit and that that's nice when you're when you're working with it because it makes it a lot easier to do your twirls so I wanted to have the same effect on this one that I'm making so I wanted that nice and straight because that's where the handguard is going to fit dead up against and that's going to help keep it from sliding down and when it's mounted into place so I know rambling on probably didn't understand a word I said but you'll get it in the end okay Thanks. One thing I should mention before moving on is I'm going to work now at hand sanding this area here and get this nice and smooth. Uh, not as worried about the rest of the blade right now. I can do that later. But this area I want to get real smooth before I glue the sides of the handle into place because it's going to be a little harder once those are sticking up to sand this down and get it smooth. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that now, hand sand this and get that nice just the way I want it perfectly before I glue the handle into place. And I'm going to be careful not to sand down the edges. I want these to be nice sharp edges here and here and here and here because that's where the hand guard is going to fit in. I'll show you that later. But just to know before you glue the handle into place I'm going to uh, hand sand this section here. Okay so I've started working on the sanding so I'll show you here. You can see it's starting to take shape. Uh, just trying to get the majority of the sanding done. Now, a word on sanding. When you're sanding them, when you're doing the hand sanding, no, I say hand sanding, but actually I'm using this guy over here. I love that thing. When I'm using that and I'm going over it, just take your time and just really work and try to get all the little divots out of it. I still have some work I need to do here. I've got quite a bit of work to do on it, but I'm probably not going to finish the very final sanding obviously until I have the whole thing completed and the handle done but I want to get the majority of it I'm still gonna probably do a little well a lot more sanding on this uh, before I start working on the handle but just really take your time on the sanding because that's after you stain it you know you're, you're gonna be disappointed if you didn't take your time and sand it right so this is where the art I suppose comes into it and if you really do a nice job sanding and really give it a really good shape then you'll be uh, really excited with the end product. Now, one uh, thing to mention, if you're making a pair like I am, continually check them against each other when you're sanding to make sure that the thickness is even and that they're the same size and that they look right together as a pair. Like I can see here that this one, the one on the right, I need to sand down a little bit and make it a little thinner. You don't want one real thin and one real thick, especially if you're going to be using them for training because the, the feel will be a little different in them. So you want them to be as close as possible if you're making a pair. And if you're making them for just display, well, then it doesn't matter quite as much, but you still want them to look like they belong together and they're not two separate weapons thrown together. Just, just a final word there on that. I think they're coming out okay, though. We'll see. Okay, I glued the handles into place. I decided to use a two-part epoxy. Uh, I did that because I wanted a really strong bond, and I wanted something that would set fairly fast. Uh, so in about an hour, I'll start shaping this again. It does take 24 hours to completely cure, but I should be able to mess with it in about an hour or so, I'm hoping. Okay, so I started roughing out the handle on my belt sander. Um, here's what I started out with. As you can see, and then just started roughing it out on the belt sander here. Uh, now I'm at this point. Now I'm still going to do more on the belt sander. Any of the contours, uh, like here, and then it's going to come in a bit here and have some contour through here. Any of that I'm going to do on the belt sander because that's going to be a little easier. So I can just kind of shape it there. Um, and then I'll go to hand sanding to really smooth it out and have it looking nice. But you can see it's starting to uh, look a little bit like a handle. Uh, still have a lot more work to do. Okay, now here's the part that's kind of a pain in the butt. Now, if you're using these for display, it doesn't really matter. But if you're using them for training like I'm going to, you really want to make sure that the handle feels good in your hand. And the only way to do that is to try it out. And then if it doesn't feel right, you know, take a look at it. Decide where you need to trim a little off like I did on this and sand it down again. Then shape it a little more, sand it down. You just keep doing that till it has a real good feeling in your hand. Now here I'm going to need to take a little more off of here and a little more off of here. Um, so it feels real good in the hand. Okay, there we go. I'm pretty much done shaping on the handles. I like the way they feel in my hand. feels pretty good. 
Uh, I still need to do some more sanding on the blade as well as the handle. But um, I think they're coming out real nice. And once I do that and the handguard and uh, stain them, I'm going to have a very nice, uh, very nice training weapon that'll uh, last a lifetime. Okay, now for the handguards, I took a one inch thick piece of wood, uh, drew a semicircle in it, measuring so that I'd have uh, the size I wanted for the, for the sword. Uh, then what I did is I measured the width that I would need. Remember I left this square? So I measured the width I would need and the length I would need so that I could make a nice square here. And then once I had that drawn, I cut all the way here and all the way here to cut it out so that the separation is in two separate spots so it should be nice and strong when I glue it back together. So I'm going to fit it onto here and glue it together um, loosely so that it just sort of moves up and down loosely. Then once it's completely dried I'm going to force it into place to get it exactly where I want and glue it into that place so it'll be able to move a little bit until it's dry to itself and then I'll dry it to the sword. Uh, it probably doesn't make much sense but it uh, it will later. Now before I glue this I'm gonna shape the outside a bit and get it to look the way I want because once it's mounted it's gonna be hard to shape. That's a theory anyway. Okay I epoxied the two ends together um, on each sword and while the epoxy is drying I was careful to move it back and forth on the sword a little bit so it doesn't get glued into place on the sword because I don't want to do that just yet. Now I used the two-part epoxy because I didn't want to have to wait too long and that's nice and strong it'll hold it real secure. When I glue it to the actual sword itself um, I think what I'll do is I'll probably use a wood glue and just wait the full 24 hours for it to cure. But I didn't want to wait too long for this. This way I can just give it a couple hours and then I can um, then I can sand it a bit and shape it and then put the wood glue on and push it into place and let it sit for 24 hours. Then do the final sanding on it. Sand, sand, sand. A lot of sanding going on. Okay, day two. And as you can see, I glued the... Uh, hand guards on there and that's had a while to cure so now notice the angle there because the the handle itself actually isn't a downward handle is the idea and I'm pretty happy with the way it came out I need to still do a lot more sanding today I'm going to sand this down quite a bit and I need to do some finishing sanding on the blade and the handles but so far it's looking pretty good um, now I need to fill in a couple areas on this where it's not a real tight fit, not quite as little more air in there than I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of wood putty in there to seal that in and finish sanding it and staining it and they should be done. Okay, I'm just about done here. I did all the the rough sanding or the finished sanding just about. Now I'm just going to um, go down to uh, 220 grit sandpaper and actually hand sand it. Uh, just to give it a finish, make sure it's nice and uh, smooth and then stain it. And finally I'll be done. Okay now I've finished all the fine sanding so I'm ready to uh, stain so we'll see how that comes out. I'm going to use a red mahogany stain because I like the way that looks on the red oak. Um, also, it looks really good on the um, basswood, uh, which I used on the handle. So I think that's going to look really good. So we'll find out. Okay, I finished staining. Uh, wasn't real happy with it at first, so I sanded it down again and restained it. Um, but that's just me. I get kind of weird that way. But um, so now they're all stained, and what I need to do next is uh, I'm going to actually put a lacquer over them. Uh, clear lacquer because uh, I want to give them a little extra protection and, you know uh, you could always oil them to give them a, a nice finished look but like I said I want to give them a little extra protection a little bit of a hard shell on the outside so that's what I'm doing with them 
Okay, and there we have them, the finished swords, the Chinese broadswords. Uh, interesting story, when I was finishing it, uh, I decided one of them, I wasn't really happy with the finish, so I decided I was going to sand it down and redo it. So I sanded it down, and then I needed to uh, restain it, of course, after sanding off the finish. And um, I started staining it, I was wondering why it wasn't looking right. Then realized that I had accidentally grabbed the ebony stain and was staining it the wrong color. So I wound up having to sand it down completely again, and then restain it, and then refinish it. But finally, here it is, the finished product, and I think it looks pretty good. Well, okay, that's it. That's the end of the vlog. Finally. My God, that was long. Wow. Well, I had a lot to show you. So, hopefully you found it helpful, and if not, you found it amusing. Either way, uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Later, dude. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe.